And everybody said, yeah. I welcome everyone tonight to our Bible study in Jesus' name. Yeah. Our congregation at the headquarters here and all over where we're connected with the Word. And the Lord bless everyone in the study of His Word in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your love. Thank you for the provision of your word, the preparation of your word, and also the preservation of the word. All these millions, all these thousands of years, you preserved it for us for good. That we may be saved, that we may be prepared to meet you in heaven at last. We are praying, Lord, that the purpose of giving us the word will be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> God bless you. You can sit down. We are coming to James chapter 3, we're reading from verse 5, and we'll be going eventually through to verse 10. Look at verse 5, it says, Even so the tongue is a little member, a little member. Tonight we're looking at the word little, a little member, a little tongue, a little finger, a little hand, a little toe, a little foot. Now, we need to understand that the tongue by itself, without connection with the heart, can do nothing, can say nothing. So, everything we're saying about the little member, the little tongue, understand, is in connection with the heart. The heart is the center of our living. And if the heart is unconverted, the tongue will be untamed. If the heart is carnal, the tongue will be critical. If the tongue, if the heart is dirty, the tongue will be obscene. If the heart is polluted, the tongue too will speak out polluted, perverse things. If the tongue, if the heart is cleansed, then the language, the tongue will be clean. If the heart is saved, the soul is saved, the inner man and experience that transformation of heart, the tongue will also speak clean. Conversion in the heart will bring cleanness of language and tongue. If the heart is sanctified, purified, holy, the tongue also and the language you speak will be sanctified words, they'll be clean words, they'll be pure words. If the heart is filled, with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit, the tongue too will talk spiritual. So the question is not just about the tongue. It's the tongue in connection with the heart. And I must ask you the question, have you been saved, born again, since you started coming? to the church or hearing the word of God? I need to ask you, have you been sanctified? Have you been cleansed? Have you been made holy in your heart? Then, since you started coming to the church, then your language will be different, your action will be different, and the use of your hand, little hand, the use of your feet, little feet, the use of your tongue, little member, will be profitable and purifying and defined to the people. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? You are just coming and coming and coming. You have not been saved, you have not been sanctified, you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost. The condition of your heart will tell, will impact the conversation of your mouth. So let's understand, we're talking about the little things, the little tongue, and the little member. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and it boasts 
great things. Then it says, Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. Tonight we're talking about the little member that determines great matters for time and eternity. The little member, the little tongue, the little part of that in your body that actually is so connected with your heart and your tongue cannot escape what your heart is thinking, what your heart is feeling, what your heart is planning and it is that connection with the heart that shows the condition of your heart i cannot see your heart but i can hear what comes out from your tongue i cannot touch your heart but i can be touched by what comes out of your tongue and it is that connection the little member that speaks out, that reveals the condition of your heart, whether you are converted or not, whether you are saved or not, whether you are sanctified, whether you are at peace or not in your heart. If you are not at peace in your heart, your tongue will not project any peaceful relationship or conversation. It's the tongue that reveals whether you are shallow or you are deep, whether you are full and filled with the Holy Ghost or you are empty completely. And the tongue, that is that the reason why we're looking at this. There are three things we're looking at tonight as we consider the message. Number one is the little fire that devours great men. The little fire is talking about the tongue and it refers to that tongue as fire, the little fire that devours great men. Now look at number two. Number two, uh, the little foxes. I told you we're concentrating on the word little. It appears little, a little word, a little sentence, a little conversation, a little action. A small little behavior, the little foxes that destroy great ministries. Number three, the little faith that doubts our great maker. The little faith that doubts our great maker. Uh, you will understand the foxes connected with the little tongue. You understand the little faith connected with the little tongue. Everything is still about the tongue, but it looks at the tongue in different perspectives so that we'll take care what happens to us in time on earth and in eternity by the activities and the actions of the tongue we're looking at number one here number one is the little fire that devours great men we're looking at james chapter uh, three and we're reading from verse five in james chapter three verse five it says even so uh, the, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things uh, and it says behold how great a matter the little fire came look at verse six in verse six it says it says and the tongue is a fire the tongue is a fire you know why because the heart is full of the fury when the heart is furious the tongue will be fire when the tongue is angry the tongue will be like fire and when the heart is filled with hatred understand it's not the fault of the tongue it's the condition of the heart and if the heart is full of hatred you'll find the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity if the iniquity in the heart had not been forgiven had not been uprooted then the mouth, the leaves, the tongue will be full of iniquity. But when the iniquity is uprooted from the heart, when the heart does not have that 
deep the prayed nature of iniquity anymore then the tongue will be free but now the common man the depraved man the natural man the unsaved man and the tongue is a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members among our members he's talking about the members the eyes members of the body ears members of the body the mouth member of the body and the hands members of the body and the feet members of the body and all these members are coordinated and directed by the heart make the tree good and its fruit will be good make the heart saved converted consecrated purified and the tongue and the members will be all right but it says this tongue it defileth the whole body and is and set it on fire the cause of nature is the tongue that sets on fire the cause of nature the life that we should live naturally the tongue coming from the heart that defileth the whole nature and it is set of fire on the fire of hell now look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says for every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea it says it's tamed and has been tamed of mankind and that's what the lord uh, told adam and eve they'll subdue the earth and bring everything on earth everything in the sea everything in the sky under control and man has done that they've tamed elephants they've tamed lions they put them in the zoo they actually control them they control those things outside of us man can easily control things outside himself but it tells us in verse 8 it says but the tongue can no man tame why Oh, because the heart remains the natural heart, the sinful heart, the unconverted heart, the unregenerated heart. And once the heart remains like that, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And because the heart cannot be converted by man there's no salvation in all the efforts of man that's why since he cannot convert his heart he cannot cleanse his heart he cannot regenerate his heart he cannot transform his heart that's why he cannot tame he cannot change he cannot turn the tongue that's why it says but the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison uh, we're coming to you know some men now the way they spoke the little tongue brought them into destruction look at uh, isaiah chapter 5 we're reading from verse 24 isaiah chapter 5 reading from verse 24 it says therefore as the fire devours the stubble and the and the flame consumes it consumes the child so their spot their root shall be as rottenness when you say their root is not talking of the root of the righteous or the root of the transformed or the root of the children of god the root of the common man the root of the carnal man the root of the lifestyle the conversation of the common person who had not been born again his root will be like rottenness and it says they have cast away the law of the lord out they have cast away that law 
the law of the Lord of hosts. And it says they have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Who are those people? Unrighteous people, unconverted people, unsaved people. That's why. Because their hearts are not saved. Their hearts are not transformed. Their hearts are not changed. That's the reason why their tongue will be like fire. And the fire devours them. It tells us in Exodus chapter 5. Look at verse 2. Here is a Pharaoh. And here is the little tongue of Pharaoh coming out and saying what a man shouldn't say to his maker. About his maker. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord. Then he said, neither will I let Israel go. Uh, can you make some connection there? I know not the Lord. Because I know not the Lord, I will not let the children of Israel go. Because I know not the Savior, I will not release anyone. Because I'm not free. Because I'm not like Britain. Because I do not know the Lord, the Lord who saves, the Lord who sanctifies, and the Lord who immerses us in the power of the Holy Ghost. Because I know not the Lord, I will not let them go. The people who were their tongue keep others in captivity. You know why? They know not the Lord. The people who speak outrageous words, blasphemous words, unbelieving words against the God of heaven. You know why? They know not the Lord. And because they know not the Lord, their hearts have not been transformed. And your speech will betray you. Your tongue will give you out. Your tongue will tell who you are and what you are. Look at the result in Exodus chapter 15. We're reading there from verse 9. This man that, you know, spoke against the Lord. I know not the Lord. Look at the result. Because the tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity is set us on fire because of nature. And the man himself with that unruly tongue, the man himself with that blasphemous tongue is set on the fire of hell. It says in Exodus chapter 15, reading from verse 9, it says, The enemy said, Pharaoh, the enemy said, the emperor, the enemy said, I will, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, and my lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Uh, that's what he said with the tongue. And you can see the tongue, his tongue is for destruction. His tongue is for scattering. His tongue is for kind of eliminating the people that God himself has established. And he boasted with the tongue. The tongue boasted great things. Look at the next verse there in verse 10. In verse 10, thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them, they sank as lead in the mighty waters. That's what happened to Pharaoh. That's what happened to all his uh, army and all the chariots and the riders on the chariots. In verse 11, it says, Who? It's like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness and fearful in praises, doing wonders. The man perished because of his little tongue, what he had said against God. Look at Daniel chapter 3. 
verse 15 in Daniel chapter 3 verse 15 it says now if you be ready at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet lute harp sackbot sabtree and dosima and all kinds of music and ye fall down and worship it the image which I have set up made and uh, well but if ye worship not ye shall be cast into the, the same hour in the midst of a burning furry furnace and who is that God that the little tongue active again that the carnal tongue speaking again that the unbelieving tongue speaking again that the boasting tongue speaking again and it says who is that god that shall deliver you out of my hands the lord proved to him that the mighty god of heaven that makes the fire of the kingdom of babylon nothing he threw them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He threw them into the very fiery furnace, and the Son of God came. Now, walking freely in the midst of the fire, and he called them out. You would have thought that would have been enough to break the man. No. Once the heart is not converted, whatever miracle you see, whatever wonders you observe once the heart is unconverted untouched untransformed the mouth the leaves the tongues will still continue in the old old way of talking look at chapter 4 in chapter 4 daniel chapter 4 we're reading from verse 30 in Daniel chapter 4 verse 30 and the king spake and said is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty look at verse 31 in verse 31 it says while the word was in the king's mouth there fell a voice from heaven saying O king Nebuchadnezzar a king but his tongue was not a, a kindly kingly royal tongue pos whatever position anybody has whatever education anybody has whatever authority anybody has if the heart is not converted the tongue was still the canal whatever upliftment whatever opportunities anyone has in life if the heart has not been touched, transformed, tamed, the tongue also will not be tamed. And because of what comes out of the mouth, the tongue, then judgment comes. It says to thee, it is spoken, that the, 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 the kingdom is departed from me look at verse 32 in verse 32 and they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field they shall make thee eat to eat grass as oxen and seven times seven seasons seven years shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth 
he to whomsoever he will. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, the same hour was the scene fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men, and did each grass as oxen, and his uh, body was wet with dew, the dew of heaven. And it says, till his ears were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like birds' claws. You see, that was the problem. It was the problem of the tongue. As that touch with the Old Testament, no. As long as man has a heart and he has a tongue, and the tongue is connected with the heart, and the heart is not cleansed, the heart is not circumcised, the heart is not transformed, what will still come out of the tongue will bring fire, devastation, judgment upon the man. We're looking at Jude, Judas only one chapter. Jude chapter 1 verse 14 and Enoch also the servant from Adam prophesied of thee saying behold the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints and then it says in verse 15 in verse 15 to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly ungodly that's the heart then the tongue unruly that the heart then the tongue unrighteous that the heart that the tongue to convince all that ungodly among them of all their ungodly unrighteous deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches hard speeches like the speech of Pharaoh like the speech of Nebuchadnezzar like the speech of Herod like the speech of the people whose hearts and lives have not been turned around by the Lord the hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, these are murmurers, tongue, complainers that the tongue walk in after their own evil laws. And it says, and their mouth and their tongue speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage is the problem of the tongue and eventually if somebody will come to this world will have the big mouth and the big mouth will be speaking against the god of heaven is called the antichrist look at revelation chapter 13 and reading from verse 4, Revelation chapter 13, reading from verse 4, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? Why? Because of what he says with the mouth. Because his heart was contrary to God. His heart was purposefully against the authority of the Almighty. And so he speaks from the condition of the heart. It tells us in verse 5, in verse 5 it says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, and 
blaspheme and blasphemes and, and, and blasphemies and then it says some power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months then in verse 6 in verse 6 it tells us and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and it and his uh, and his uh, tabernacle and uh, in the and it says and them that dwell in heaven that the antichrist and the big thing you know about the antichrist is the tongue in the mouth is the blasphemy because of his devilish heart like that of a dragon what happens to him look at chapter 19 in uh, chapter 19 verse 20 um, revelation chapter 19 chapter 19 reading from verse 20 19 please in revelation chapter 19 reading from verse 20 it says and the beast was taken and with the false prophet that wrought miracles uh, from uh, from uh, before him and it says with which he deceived them that dwelt that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped the image and these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone you see the tongue will set the course of nature on fire and him that shall be sure be set on the fire of hell look at chapter 20 verse 10 in chapter 20 verse 10 it says and the devil that deceived them how did he deceive them by the tongue by the words of the mouth that, that's how people usually deceive that's how followers of satan that's how they deceive that's how they unconverted who are not born again and the carnal and the evil people full of iniquity in the heart the mouth deceives the people that they are relating with and it says and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever that's how serious it is to have a tongue that is misused a tongue that is not under control that little member that is not under control but understand you cannot control the tongue in isolation you have to have conversion in the heart you have to have cleansing in the heart you have to have the circumcision of heart and then the tongue will be under control if not the little fire will devour men great men small men common men even church going men if their hearts are not converted and their tongues are not converted we're coming to number two number two here we're looking at the little foxes that destroy great ministries the little foxes we're still talking about the tongue but now we're using the picture of the foxes we're looking at um, chapter 3 of James reading from verse 6 James chapter 3 reading from verse 6 and the tongue as a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members and then it says it that it defileth the whole body and is and setteth on fire 
the cause of nature and it is set on the fire of hell and you remember the story that jesus told of that rich man who lived sumptuously here on earth and he didn't know god as redeemer he didn't even acknowledge god as his maker eventually he died and he went to hell fire and his whole body was in hell fire the fingers the hands the feet the body but the one thing he singled out when he said father abraham sent lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame the tongue the tongue yes the whole body will go the whole personality will go to hell but the tongue in particular to cool my tongue because i'm tormented in this flame the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity it is set on the fire of hell look at verse h in verse h it says but the tongue can no man tame the tongue can no man tame friends who are here tonight brothers sisters who are here tonight the study does not lead us to just okay i'll be quiet I won't say anything, you will say something, you know, it's the heart. If your heart is provoked, your heart cannot jump out and say anything and point to the people provoking the heart. The heart will send message to the tongue and the tongue will show that you are under provocation. When somebody pushes you, and tips you to be angry the heart cannot jump out and show anger no the facial expression might show the anger but eventually it is the tongue that will lash out on the people that you are thinking and making you angry when the heart is frustrated and emotionally you are frustrated and you know the mind will not jump out the soul will not jump out uh, the soul the mind the heart will give the assignment to the tongue and say now emotionally all the members within the body they are disturbed and so tongue show them tell them it is the tongue and so if the heart has not been dealt with, the tongue can no man tame. It says it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison. Uh, you know how when people are sad, it's okay, I'm sad. Why should anybody around me be happy? And so they send forth poisonous words to their neighbors so that as I am sad, they too will be sad in the tongue. A deadly poison. When somebody is, uh, you know, it's like inside, there is an acid that is burning on the inside. Uh -uh. If I'm burning with acid on the inside, why are the people around me so calm and so nice and so peaceful? They want the other people to be as sorrowful, as corroded, as, uh, as feeling pain like they are feeling pain that's why the tongue will lash out so that if i'm not happy you don't have a right to be happy if i'm sorrowful you have to be sorrowful if i am not uh, you know uh, content with where i am then there should be no contentment in your life the tongue is full of deadly poison and it doesn't matter a little poison will make the water undrinkable a little poison will make your environment in a bit uninhabitable and because of that little thing yeah, the tongue, that's the reason why we need to get that tongue back to calvary 
and get that tongue crucified. And the heart cleansed, a cleansed heart, a crucified tongue, combining together will help us to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. The tongue is very important. Look at Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. Take us, the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. The little foxes that spoil the vines. Think about it. A relationship is the little, little things that happen. The little words we throw at each other that spoils a relation. Think about the family. In the family, the little, little words, not thoughtful, not careful, just throwing out the word like an arrow, like a dagger. It's those little, little words that scatter the family. And think about the ministry, the work the Lord has given us. And you have a lot of people around you and you're working together and you're moving together in unison, in cooperation and in coordination, well coordinated. But it's the little world, you know, somebody there, something is rising from the heart and whatever is rising from the heart gets to the tongue. And as soon as it gets to the tongue and the fellow is not remembering that in unity there is strength. When you scatter us, there is no strength anymore. And the word comes to the mouth and then it spews that out. That is the little poison that destroys a fellowship, a usefulness, a profitability. And so it's telling us that the little foxes, they spoil our vine because our vines have tender graves. It tells us in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 13, we're looking at verse 4, O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. That thy prophets are like the foxes. What do the prophets use? The tongue. How do they profess, or prophesy the tongue? How do they pray the tongue? How do they counsel the tongue? How do they encourage the tongue? How do they speak false doctrine? The tongue. And because of the positioning and because of the wrong use of the tongue of those prophets, they became foxes that scattered them. Uh, look at Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 1. In Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 1, it says, But there were false prophets also among the people. Remember, it's referring to the Old Testament. There were false prophets also among the people. How do we know there were false prophets? Their tongue, what they said, what they spoke. When they confronted those prophets, confronted Jeremiah, and Jeremiah had prophesied the word of the Lord. How did Jeremiah prophesy the word of the Lord? The tongue. That's why God said, I have touched your tongue. I put my word in your mouth. All the good prophets have is the tongue. The false prophets, when the false prophet came and said, No, Jeremiah, the captivity is going to last for only two years. And he deceived the people. How did he deceive the people? The tongue, the tongue. And so, it's the tongue that makes a prophet a uh, fox or makes the prophets foxes. And these little foxes, what they say with their mouth, it what makes people to believe lies. It what makes people to get discouraged. It's what makes people to say, okay, if that is so, we're going back to Egypt. It is the tongue that acts like that little fox that will spoil and scatter and destroy the ministry. There were false prophets also 
among the people, even as there shall be false teachers, false teachers among you. How do we know a false teacher? By the tongue. How do we teach? Whether you are teaching in the school or you are teaching in the church, it's the tongue. Whether you are teaching the home or you are teaching in um, you know, the social circle, it's the tongue. And it's the tongue that betrays somebody as either a false prophet or a false teacher. And then it says, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves. Bring upon themselves. The tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity and it defiles the whole body. It, is, it sets the course of nature on fire and the tongue itself. Now, when it says the tongue will be set in the fire of hell, the fire of hell, you understand? It doesn't mean when you die that God will cut off the tongue and throw it in the fire because it's the tongue that sets the course of nature on fire and it is set on the fire of hell the tongue still remains in the body and the whole body of the tongue because of the evil the unrighteousness in the tongue the whole body now with the tongue a search on fire. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it tells us, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And in verse 3, it says in verse 3, and through covetousness shall they with faint hypocritical pretending words make merchandise of you and it says whose judgment now of a long time so lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not it's talking about the judgment that comes because of the unrighteousness and evil in the tongue. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it says, When you speak, that's the tongue again, in action. The tongue in action. They speak great, swelling words of vanity, swelling words of emptiness. Swelling words of shallowness. And you know, the, the people who talk to their neighbors, I disagree. I disagree with that teaching. What do you disagree with? Okay, say what you say what you want to say. What comes out is vanity, emptiness, shallowness. It does not have any root. And they deceive their neighbors with their tongue and it said they are speaking great swelling words of vanity they it says a nail they entice through the lusts of the flesh and it says through much wantonness those that were clean escaped from them who live in error I've discovered all these many years the false teachers don't generally go out to find people they're going to deceive. They normally go to the people who had escaped from error, who had escaped from sin, the people who had given their lives to the Lord and they are saved and they're praying to be sanctified and they're praying to be steadfast in the teaching of the word of God. That's where those false teachers and those false prophets, that's where they go. They don't go to the people that do not know they are right from their left. They don't go to the terrible, abject, original, depraved sinners. They go to the people who had been that 
others have labored on, that others have brought into the kingdom. And then they speak their own great swelling words of vanity, emptiness, shallowness, so that they can turn them back to their vomit. And it says in verse 19, look at verse 19, while they promise them liberty, how do they promise them liberty with their tongue? They make the promises with their tongue. And they say, you'll be free. If you'll be free, that's a good word. But what it means is, you'll be free from the control of God. You'll be free from the law of God. You'll be free from all the control and all the directives of the Lord. And you will be on your own like Lucifer. And you'll not be under the control of God. That's bad liberty. But when you're free from sin, that's what Christ came to give. When you're free from carnality, when you're free from worldliness, that's the freedom, the liberty Christ came to give. But he said, no, no, no. They, they want you to be free from the control of the word of God so that you can live as you please. And they're very serious about that. And they talk like false teachers, false prophets and they want to assure the young people free you are going to be free young people god sets us free from sin it sets us free from self-will it sets us free from satanic control or any other kind of freedom that's false doctrine and then it says it says that the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought in bondage look at verse 20 in verse 20 it says but if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. I pray the Lord will not leave us in the hands of false prophets and false teachers in Jesus name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the little faith that doubts our great maker. The little faith that doubts our great maker and we're looking at um, we're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 30 Matthew chapter 6 we're reading from verse 30 it says wherefore if God so close the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven shall he not much more close you O ye of little faith O ye of little faith what has that got to do with the little tongue well because we manifest little faith by the little tongue by the little member you remember the story of um, Rebecca, the wife of uh, Isaac, the mother of Esau and Jacob. While well, the mother was pregnant of the twins, God had told her that the younger will rule over the elder and that the blessing the way she understood it and the way it is said the blessing of Abraham and Isaac will fall on the younger on Jacob now the mother heard that Isaac called Esau and said 
Go make me the kind of full venison that I love, that I like, and bring it, and I will bless you before I die. Well, there are people that think of death much, much longer before death comes. Because oh, if you read the Genesis properly, I see did not die until 40 years after. And yet his thought was going to die now uh, because he was having some old age symptoms. His eyes were getting dim. And he thought, this is a sign, old age sign. So, God make me the venison before I die. And the mother had that. And the mother remembered that God said he will give that blessing to the younger, to Jacob. But now, little faith. She didn't think that God can overrule that God can do what he needed to do. Oh, ye of little faith, called Jacob. Go, take something from your flock and bring and will prepare and will take it to your father very quickly before he succumbs back so that you will have the blessing. Jacob said, Mommy, what if my father discovers and see that I am a deceiver? and puts a curse on me. He said, don't worry about that. Let the curse come on me, O ye of little faith. You know the story? That's how they played the game, the game of little faith. And Esau came back. Esau was angry. He said, I'm going to kill that man. If the little tongue of the mother that planted that hatred in Esau, and the deception in Jacob, and he deceived the husband. When we take out of the hand of God what he should do and what he will do, and then we manipulate so that we will be clever, more clever than God. That is little faith. And it's a little tongue that plays the game and eventually we get into trouble. Uh, we're looking at Matthew chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 26. Matthew chapter, chapter 8, verse 26, and he says unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Now, uh, the tongue does not have fear. It's just, you know, kind of tissue and blood in the heart that has fear. And when we see this situ that situation, then the fear comes to the heart and the heart spills out what it has to the tongue. Master, Master, carest not that will perish. That's what the tongue is saying. It came from the heart. And when the heart is fearful, that's the way the tongue will speak. And the tongue will waver, and the tongue will tremble, and the tongue will not be sure of itself because of the fear in the heart. Look at Isaiah chapter 51, we're reading from verse 13. Isaiah Chapter 51, verse 13. And forgettest the Lord, the maker, that has stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth and has feared, has feared, has feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor as if he were ready to destroy and wear the fury of the oppressor. When we talk words that show there is fear, there is trembling, and we're not sure of ourselves, we lose confidence. We haven't believed. 
and the little faith we have we forget what God had done in the past in the past in the Bible in the past in our lives look at us we've been in the Christian faith from that time how many years now until this time and look at what he delivered you from and look at what he protected you from but we have forgotten that the same kind of trouble coming today came already about 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And the Lord delivered us and we're still alive after 20 years of that kind of trouble that men and women in the world that they, that they stir up. But the same kind of trouble comes today and we forget our God and then we fear the fury of men we fear the storm that men and women are racing up today and it says because of that now we're shivering we're trembling we're afraid because of the fury of men and the tongue well I thus say I cannot I cannot go out why is afraid I cannot do that the tongue will be the culprit the offender that will say what it says because of the fear in the heart because the tongue cannot be disengaged from the heart you are fearful in the heart your tongue will tell and your tongue will betray you but then he tells us in Isaiah chapter 57 we're looking at verse 11 Isaiah chapter 57 verse 11 and of whom hast thou been afraid or feared that thou hast lied that thou hast lied the fear is not on the tongue the fear is in the heart the fear is in the mind the fear is in the brain but uh, the tongue uh, that will tell the lie when uh, something has happened to the heart and the heart is not stable and the heart is not steadfast and the heart does not remember without holiness no man shall see the Lord as the fear is brewing in the heart in the mouth that will lie and has not remembered that and I not remembered me nor laid to thine heart then it says have not I held my peace even of old and thou fearest me not when we fear man we cannot fear God when God has said go do this if we fear God if we honor God if we know that the sender will protect the one that is saint we go but when we see men the frowns of pharaoh the fury of pharaoh and we become afraid of men then we don't fear god anymore because we're thoughtless and our thoughtlessness makes our tongue to now say i cannot I will not. The lions are outside there. They'll eat me up. That the tongue expressing the fear in the heart. And we have not compared the Almighty God, contrasted the Almighty God with puny men, poor men who can do nothing. That's why Jesus said, Fear them not that have the power to kill and after that they have nothing else they can do i will forewarn you my friends who you will fear fear him the almighty god who has power to kill and to cast into hell forever and ever i say unto you 
fear him but our little faith will evaporate whenever we see the fury of men and we we'll see what they are saying what they are bragging about it tells us in luke chapter 12 we're reading from verse 28 luke chapter 12 we're reading from verse 8 in verse uh, 28 rather in verse 28 if then god so close the grass which today is and then it says and tomorrow is cast into the into the fire into the oven how much more will he close you O ye of little faith that's a problem O ye of little faith i pray our faith will grow in the lord in jesus name and then it says in verse 29 in verse 29 and seek ye not what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink neither be of a doubtful mind little faith makes us to be of doubtful mind but why should we doubt he is our maker why should we doubt he sent us to this world why should we doubt he has promised and, and he has also pronounced what we will do here on earth why should we doubt we're running the errands for the lord why should we doubt we're doing his will we're doing his work and he will give appropriate security and protection and provision to us as we're doing his will he will not fail you and you will not fail him he says and seek ye and seek not ye what what he shall eat or what he shall drink neither ye be neither be ye of a doubt for me look at verse 30 in verse 30 it says for all these things do the nations of the world seek at the sea cutter and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things look at verse 31 in verse 31 it says but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you amen, amen. all these things shall be added unto you when the heart forgets that the mouth of a talking of inflation when the heart forgets that the tongue will be talking of recession when the heart forgets the words of christ and he said heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away when we have that little faith and when we have that dying faith when we have that faith that is slipping away from us it shall appear the words of christ will not be fulfilled but the words of christ will be fulfilled be not of doubtful mind because if you seek the kingdom of god and its righteousness all these things shall be added unto you verse 32 in verse 32 fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom the riches of the kingdom the righteousness of the kingdom the provision of the kingdom and everything christ died for and provided on the cross of calvary it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom don't allow your tongue to run away don't allow your tongue to be you know so influenced by the doubt by the carnality by the world by everything around us let's make let's get this tongue back to calvary and you say cleanse my heart my tongue will be clean sanctify my spirit 
my tongue will be sanctified, sincere, upright, and circumcise my heart, and my tongue will be circumcised. Lord, do something in my heart and fill me with faith in your word, so that I'm not carrying about the little doubting of faith, but I'm having the faith of Jesus Christ in my heart and your mouth, your tongue, your lips will speak good words. And your family, husband and wife, parents and children, we need this faith, faith in the Lord so that and the love of God in our heart and the love and the affection in our heart will affect what we we'll say with the mouth and the literal member the little tongue, the little fire, the little foxes, the little faith will not ruin any of our lives in Jesus' name. You say good finally. Amen. God bless you. God has blessed you. God will continue to bless you. Let's, let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer that the Lord himself will work on our heart so that he will work on our tongue. Work on our heart. Purify our heart to purge our tongue. Sanctify the heart to sanctify the tongue. Because have clean faith, clear faith, complete faith in the Lord so that our tongue will be in the right position to express the right things to our neighbors. Tongue, the little tongue, will express the right thing in our families. Express the right things in our neighborhood. Express the right thing in the assembly, in the fellowship, in the church of the living God. Don't allow little fire to come out of your mouth. Don't allow a little slander, little insult, Literal deception. Literal fear. Fear of man. Literal iniquity. Don't allow your tongue to express negative issues, negative things of life. Bring that heart, that mind, that soul, and the tongue back to the altar. Lay down before the Lord. Cleanse this heart. Your emotion, don't allow your emotion to run off from you. When the emotions run off from you, your tongue will run after the emotion. It's what you feel, the emotion on the inside, that eventually affects your tongue and you regret what you say. Calm down that emotion fretfulness, worry, and anxiety in the heart. So it brings out that fretfulness on the tongue. 
let God work on the inside and then the tongue will speak right temptations come no problem they came many years ago too and they've been coming ever since whoever came at that time don't allow your tongue to run loose. What will I do? What shall I do? They've come again. They're doing that again. Calm down. Calm down. When you're distressed in your heart, disturbed in your heart, bothered in your heart, wavering in your heart, that will set your tongue on fire. And then you begin to say things you shouldn't have said. Calm down. There's no temptation that has taken you more than is common to man. But God is faithful. Also will make a way of escape that she may be able to bear it. Calm down. Think before you speak. Look before you leap. Be thoughtful. Be sober. Be steady. Look at the word of God. Faith comes by the word of God, and faith grows by the word of God. Don't allow anything to jolt you because once your soul, your spirit, your heart is jolted, taken by surprise, it will affect your tongue and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity defileth the cause of nature, setteth on fire the cause of nature, and it is set on the fire of hell. Don't allow your spirit to be disturbed, jolted, surprised, emotionally devastated, because that will affect your tongue. Follow peace with all men. And in the heart, when your heart is peaceful, your tongue will be peaceful. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. When your mind, your heart concentrates on the desire to see the Lord, holiness, then your tongue will not go astray. Have you been saved since you started hearing the word of God? Check up. Have you been truly sanctified since you started hearing about sanctification? Check up. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Check up. If you have, your tongue will be under the control of the Spirit. But if you still talk like the common man, the common woman, If 
of your tongue lacks control untamed like the carnal man the carnal woman if your tongue is spewing out angry words terrible terrifying words Christ is not in control of your tongue. Evidence is not in control of your heart. Why don't you surrender to the Lord? Your heart, your will, your mind, and let Him be Savior and Lord. Total control of your heart. Christ, supreme, the director, the Lord, the controller of your heart, your spirit, your emotion. And so, in total control of your tongue. Don't allow that little member to set the course of the nature of your life on fire. And then eventually, it is set on the fire of hell. Or shall it profit a man? If he gained the whole world by the use of a lousy, lying, deceptive tongue and he loses his soul, or what shall a man, what shall a woman give in exchange for his soul? If he is not in control of your heart, and he is not in control of your tongue. Your destiny will be on the other side. Where the untamed, unconverted, the uncontrollable, where they live for all eternity. Come to Christ. My son, my daughter, give me thine heart. Give him the heart. Let him take total, absolute control of your heart, of your mind, of your soul, of your emotion, of your decisions. Then there will be no problem with your tongue. Your tongue will be under his control. Let your salvation be meaningful. That sanctification be scriptural. Let the control of the Spirit of God upon your heart and your life, let it be evident.
Don't allow your tongue to serve the devil. Don't allow your tongue to destroy you. Don't allow your tongue to scatter your family. Take it. Of the little fire. Take it. Of the little foxes. Take it. Of the little face that tries to maneuver out clever God. For the sake of heaven, get into heaven, come back to Calvary. To seriously, steadfastly possess holiness, come back where you began to Christ, the Savior, the Sanctifier, the Baptizer, and the Holy Ghost. Come back. Come back to sobriety. Come back to sincerity. Come back to following the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Come back. Don't remain in the wilderness with the backsliders. And at the tongue that sells you into the hand of Satan, the tyrant. And he uses your tongue that little member against your spiritual progress and against your desired destiny come back Jesus name we pray yeah. father we thank you for your word the word we receive will change our lives Lord tonight we receive your word we believe your word and we're going to act on that word in Jesus name yeah. we pray Lord as we surrender our heart our soul our spirit, our mind, our emotion, our decisions, and the directions of our life, we totally surrender unto you. We pray, Lord, you come in total, absolute, spiritual control of our hearts in Jesus' name. And as to control the heart, control our tongue control our speech we pray you take away the nature of Pharaoh the nature of Nebuchadnezzar the nature of Herod away from our hearts in Jesus name we pray Lord our tongue will not scatter our families our 
tongue will not destroy our progress in our places of work. Our tongues will not destroy our children, destroy our wives, destroy our husbands, and destroy, take away happiness from our families in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, as we go, we'll remember what we've heard. And when the temptation comes to act like we used to act, talk like we used to talk. When the temptation comes to allow our tongue to run loose, remind us and bring us under the profitable, pleasant control of the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, bless your people. Amen. Bless them more. Amen. Bless them more. Amen. And let our tongues be a source of blessing to everyone around us. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Let your tongue, let your tongue, let your tongue pronounce a great heavenly amen. amen.